Hey y'all, I forgot to film an intro today, so I just wanted to let you know today I'm going to be taking you through the various parts of our garden and what we planted on our own little food plot. We have a little killdeer nest on the garden this year, so I did everything as quickly as possible to keep them happy and safely taking care of the nest. Here we go. I have a few different kinds of beans. These are just like your standard yellow, purple, green mix. And they are here and then there. And the seeds, I think were three years old. So doing pretty well. You probably can't even see it with all these weeds here. I gotta come in and pull. But they're doing pretty well considering they're so old. And then over here, I have a really cool, super long Chinese red bean from Baker Creek. So I'm hoping those turn out. So we put up these posts because we're gonna be putting some trellis netting uh, to hold up the beans and the tomatoes. I've never had very good trellises, so I'm hoping this is my year. Um, and they're supposed to come in a few days. The trellis netting is supposed to get here, so I'm hoping it comes sooner rather than later because most of this stuff is looking a little bit too big to be standing on its own. So hopefully nothing breaks in the meantime. You can see the killdeer is over there trying to act injured. So yeah, just trying to, I'm keeping an eye on the clock here. As usual, I did a very poor job labeling my tomatoes, but I think down here are some beef steaks I picked up last minute. Some, I think most of these are from MI Gardener. They're either champagne bubbles. Oh shoot. I don't want to get too close to it, but I'll just show you guys. Zoom in a little bit and we have some Killdeer eggs, we have three there right now. Just amazing how well it blends in with the wood chips. So I can see why they picked this spot. Um, not the most ideal from a gardening standpoint, but we're doing our best to stay out of their way. Most of what I'm growing is um, Amish paste tomatoes. So I believe, again, I was not good about labeling them, but I believe that is what these are pretty easy to tell once they start. So I really gotta get this trellis up because they need to stand upright. I just wanna show you this huckleberry plant because I think huckleberries are really interesting. They are supposed to fruit, they, you grow them from seed and they fruit the first year that you grow them from seed. Mine look absolutely awful. Um, so don't use this as an example, but despite the fact that they got frosted and just have had a really rough go, they're still going hardy and they're putting out these little flowers. So I think that's pretty cool. It's the only fruit that I know of around here that will <laughs> create fruit within being seeded and just a few months earlier. So we'll see, we'll see if we get anything from them, but I'd like to plant more of them in the, uh, in the future. Okay, here I've got a whole row of onions and it needs to be weeded as usual, but the wood chips are helping a lot with keeping the weeds down. So uh, hopefully I'll actually get some onions this year. I've grown it before, but I've never really gotten legit onions because the weeds take over. I find them very difficult because they don't leaf out and block down weeds. You really have to stay on top of it or I found that the wood chips really, really help. Okay, in this whole row, I just have all of our herbs. So I have three parsley, oregano, some sage, lemon balm, chives, and chamomile, rosemary, thyme, Thai basil and more rosemary and more basil. So most of these are grown from seed and they're doing pretty well. Unfortunately, like I mentioned, we had a really late frost. So it took out most of the Thai basil, which is coming back, but it's just really slow. So I'll let you guys know later on if it recovers or not. In this row, I have my cucumbers, which I just direct seeded into the garden this year. Usually I do starts, but not this year. And so they're looking a little bit small, but I think I have one of those as the striped Armenian, which I'm not sure if it's technically really a cucumber or not, but really hoping to get at least one of those. And then all the other ones are just pickling cucumbers because I've heard that pickling cucumbers are fine for eating too. And I uh, and you can't really pickle slicing cucumbers. So I'm gonna give that a try this year. Okay, I have some beds behind me that are just kind of flower beds and there's not much going on there. And I wanna show you the asparagus before we have to get out of this killdeer's way cause she's getting a little ticked off. And we've been here for a minute now. Okay, behind me is our asparagus bed and we planted some last year. We were pretty excited to see them come up last year. Of course, we didn't harvest any the first year. And then they came back this year 
quite a bit more aggressive or prevalent. It's a good thing, we want it here. So we went ahead and we planted, I think we originally planted maybe 20, 20 asparagus crowns and we love how they're doing. We planted the purple passion, which comes up purple, but it's now leafed out basically green. And then we just ordered 20 more, I wanna say, I wanna say they're Martha Washington that we just planted and then a few Jersey Giant that they just had at the store that I couldn't help but grab. So I think now we're up to about 43 of them and I just want more. Now that we're finally someplace where we're not planning on just moving away from within a year or two, we'll see what happens, you never know. But I have just really been wanting to invest in perennial or just the, the vegetables, the food that comes back year after year, like fruit trees, like berries and like asparagus. I am really enjoying that a lot more than kind of the annual gardening. There's a place for both, but it's been really fun for me because I've never really been able to do that before. Okay, behind me we have our berry patches. We're pretty excited about these because the raspberries are getting ready to ripen, probably in about a week is my guess. And right here in the first row we just have blackberries and then the other three rows are raspberries. What I've been doing is trying to propagate them. So I'm finding the raspberries are really easy to propagate. I'm trying a few different methods and experimenting with them. So I'm making a video about that. But they're pretty easy to just pull up and I'm finding plants in the ground to extend the rows for free and it's working really well. Sorry about the wind guys, that's just kind of always how it is out here. What's been a little more tricky is propagating the blackberry plants. So I thought that they're supposed to take over but our blackberry plants have been struggling more than the raspberry plants. So we'll see what happens. I propagated a blackberry plant like I did with the raspberry plants and it didn't really work. It looked like it just died, but actually I think it's still alive because it's got little leaf buds on it even though all the other leaves have fallen off. So I'll keep you posted on that one. I realize you are supposed to, I think it's tip, tip root blackberry plants. It's supposed to work a little bit better. So I'll probably try some of that too, but it's been a fun experiment. And then in front of me, we have a whole field which I plan to be a melon field, like melons, uh, pumpkins, butternut squash, all kinds of winter squash over there. And it's doing all right, things are slow, but what I'm really frustrated with is just the weeds. I should have known better, but I just kind of dug holes and planted things thinking that the squash plants, because in my experience, they grow really fast. I thought they would take over the weeds and not really be a concern, but the weeds are growing faster than everything that I wanted to grow. So we're gonna see, I've just been kind of weeding around each plant for now. Next year, the plan is to get wood chips out here over everything. Um, I'm just really, really happy with, for the most part, how the wood chip garden has been doing. And I'm, I'm over weeding, I'm, I'm kind of done with it. Plus, we know that the soil needs a lot more organic matter anyway. We can always add more nitrogen with compost tea and that kind of thing, so. Uh, not too worried about that, but yeah, we do in this patch. We have some pumpkins. We have some watermelons. We have uh, I don't know like kabocha squash just funky little winter squash acorn squash some cantaloupe um, Yeah, that kind of thing hoping that it does work out in the long run I really want to have a lot of just kind of pick and store vegetables like things that you don't really have to prep for storage and things like butternut squash and kabocha squash and uh, similar varieties I think are, are really good for that. So we're giving it a little try this year. Okay, behind me is the orchard. There's not too much to say there except that things are doing well. Um, I usually do separate orchard update videos. I'm trying to think of anything significant. The fig tree is growing much to my surprise so far. So that's good. We did have kind of a caterpillar problem. I think they were probably like 10 caterpillars, but they've disappeared. So probably they are just turning into moths now, but if I'm being optimistic, I'm thinking we had a ton of killdeer around here and I know that killdeer eat insects and they all kind of came in and they all kind of moved on at the same time the caterpillars are gone. So who knows, maybe they ate them, but this one little killdeer family decided to stay. Here is our strawberry patch. I just posted a whole video on how this area is doing. Um, we, you know, we had a pretty good first year, I'd say. Learned some things along the way. So check out that video if you're curious on the specifics there. Now we're just kind of getting these sort of overripe small berries. We're not really getting the big juicy ones. There are a few ones over there. This is really, oh wow. This one actually looks really good. This is more what we like to see when we pick. So I'm gonna snag this one. Uh, this plant is probably just on the later side, but since these are June bearing, they're kind of on their 
tail end of the bearing and we'll probably be taking a break pretty soon. I mean, this isn't bad. This isn't bad at all. This is the final area I thought I would bring you along to see. Not my proudest gardening. It was kind of an afterthought, this area. So I have a couple rows of corn. They are both for cornmeal. What do you, what do you call them? Meal corn? I don't know. They're, they're meant to be ground up and or popped maybe. Glass gem is one of them. So it has a bunch of pretty colors. And then the other one is Snofistine Dent. Something like that. I don't know why I ordered it. Said it was good for cornmeal. So I'm growing those as an experiment. I swore I would never grow sweet corn again because I just, it, it just didn't go well. The birds ate it all and it was all fungusy and I know it's supposed to be a good thing in some parts of the world, but not here. So here I am again growing corn because you know, but then to the right of that, I have some sunflowers and then I was trying to grow a row of amaranth and then a row of sorghum because I'm trying my hand at growing some chicken feed this year. Unfortunately, I had really poor germination rates for both of those. I only have like two amaranth plants and I think like seven sorghum. So we'll see how they go, but this is where they are right now. And then I just kind of have a field of potatoes, which are not super exciting. And then a couple rows of sweet potato slips, which I'm not sure are even going to amount to anything here. Cause I'm afraid that we are too far north. We'll see. But um, I mean the company, I ordered them back in January and the company didn't even ship them until June. So we'll see. It, it would have been tight even if I'd gotten them in during the last frost date, but I, you know, they didn't even get here until a month after that. So I don't have super high hopes, but we'll see what happens. There is one other thing I wanted to show you, which I don't think I've shown on the channel yet. It's kind of my miscellaneous weird stuff berries patch. So it's not your common berries. It's a little weirder stuff that maybe I won't eat so much, but we're still growing because we want to be able to taste it. Okay, this right here is an elderberry plant. We planted it as bare root stock this spring and we're already getting a bunch of little flowers. So I think we might get a few clusters of elderberries already this year. I know that elderberries are native, I think, or at least do really well in this area. So we love that. We have two plants. If they do well and if we enjoy them, we will surely propagate them and plant some more. I think this one is the York elderberry and the other one is the Nova. Okay, over here we also have a baby gooseberry plant. It does have a bunch of thorns. And if I had known that when I planted it, I might, or when I bought it, I might not have bought it. But it's fine, we have this one, and then we have another one over there, which doesn't look like it's doing all too well. It's got this color changing leaves, so it looks like it's a little bit stressed. I've never had gooseberry before, so hopefully we get to that point where we get to try it. And then over here, we have two different currants. We have a red currant and a black currant plant. And we are already getting little berries on them. So I'm really excited. I don't think I've ever tasted currants either, but it just sounds really timeless. And uh, yeah, like a fruit I'm excited to try. Over here, we have our rhubarb, which just looks completely crazy right now. But it's just kind of a fun miscellaneous and uh, perennial patch of food we have over here that I'm hoping to expand with more strange sort of varieties or fruits. They're not even strange, but they're just not that common. Hoping to expand with more in the future. So far, I'm especially impressed with how the elderberries are doing. Uh, we're in zone five, so if you have any ideas or suggestions for kind of odd plants that we can plant out here, I would really appreciate them. We just ordered, I just received some pine berries and some white black berries, so that mixes things up a little bit more, but I know there's so many fruits out there that I've never tried or as, you know, especially ones that are native to our area. Like we're considering getting some pawpaw trees. I initially shied away from them because they take so long to bear fruit, but you know, even if we don't get to eat the fruit, somebody else will most likely in the future. So maybe we'll get a couple pawpaw trees next year, but anything like that that you guys can think of, I would love to hear suggestions for kind of odd, uh, especially perennial plants that we can grow out here. I've tried to grow citrus. It doesn't grow, doesn't go well for me. I have them in pots and they really struggled last winter. So um, probably not anything potted I have to bring in and out, but 
anything that grows around here, I would love, love, love to hear. It's kind of weird off the beaten path suggestions. So I think that takes care of today's garden tour. Hopefully those kill deer will keep taking great care of their babies. We're gonna keep being very conscious of them and staying out of their way as much as possible. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.